Hey, what's up everybody? Deep Sky Dan here, and welcome back to my smartphone astrophotography channel. Smartphone Astro, let's go! Alright, so in today's video, I want to introduce a three-part series that I'm going to be starting. I'm really looking forward to this. This is going to be a great series to help you image galaxies like I do. Uh, everything you're going to need to do this. In today's video, part one, we're going to talk about my exact setup this is exactly what I'm using to image all the galaxies. And I'm going to get a little bit more into detail about this setup, exactly all the moving parts here, the pieces, everything that I use to do what I do. In part two is going to be an imaging session where I'm going to image a galaxy at night. I'm going to show you exactly how I set up my phone, the phone holder, and how we image with the Deep Sky Camera app. Then in part three, is going to be a processing tutorial on Photoshop. Exactly what I go through, the trial and error that I do to get the finished images that I do. It's not always easy, but in hopes that all this will help you to image galaxies like I do if that's what you want to do. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, let's get started. So what you're seeing in front of me here, this is my complete Astro Rig. Um, everything from top to bottom here and let's start up top and I'll tell you about each piece and what it does so what you're probably noticing is this big beautiful SCT this is Celestron Edge HD8 I got this recently used and this has been the best addition to my astrophotography rig um, this is made for astrophotography but I can also tell you that Visual viewing is great too. Um, great views all the way from center out to the edge. The stars are awesome. Um, all my images recently are with this OTA and I can't recommend it enough. Uh, astronomy equipment is really hard to get right now. I got this one used so I got really lucky. Um, now you're also noticing this dew shield. This is important. You're going to want to get one of these as well. Uh, this is going to protect that lens inside there from any moisture or any stray light while you're imaging. Um, so definitely get one of those. Mine has a uh, dew strip inside here, a heated dew strip. I can connect this to a controller and I can keep it dew free. So I'll probably use that in the winter time when it gets really cold and things start to get frozen. Um, I'll still be able to image with that. So. You don't have to have that, but if it's really cold where you live, I highly recommend you get one. Uh, this one is added in. It's really nice. Uh, don't have to worry about buying an extra piece. This is just one set um, worth the money. Now, what you're probably also noticing on top here is this big dovetail bar. Um, I've added this in uh, for a couple reasons. First reason is I'm going to actually be moving the star sense up here to help balance out the telescope a little bit more. Or if I want to use a guide scope, I can put up top here as well. Uh, second reason is I get put this on here for more stability. More stability in my OTA um, because these SCTs are notorious for flexing um, at off angles. So I wanted to add that rigidity to it. So I added this in there for those two reasons. Now. Next thing you're probably seeing is the Star Sense, and this has been a great piece of equipment. Inside here is a camera, and this does all my alignment for me. Um, once you calibrate it to your OTA, uh, when you do your alignment, it's only a few minutes. Basically, it collects the stars, and it tells you where your telescope is pointing in the night sky. So this is a great addition. I don't have to do it's two, three star alignment. Everything's automatic with this. This has been worth every penny. Um, it, like I said, it's all automatic and it's awesome. You can pick these up used. I've seen them for like two seventy five right now online. That's a pretty good deal for one. Um, very easy to use. Very simple. Uh, next piece that you're probably seeing here is my imaging rig over here, and we've got our visual back and then I've got a Bader T2 prism diagonal on here which has been a great piece of equipment these Bader uh, diagonals are awesome uh, highly recommend them uh, they're not cheap but they are worth it um, and then what you're also probably seeing in there is the Astrotech 25 millimeter paradigm 
This is a great eyepiece. These are highly recommended for uh, slower scopes like these SCTs or Max. Um, the Paradigms are like 60 bucks brand new. Uh, I picked them up for 50 bucks a piece used, but this I used for my most recent M101 uh, Galaxy, and these produce a lot of really great crystal uh, clear, nice contrasted views. Um, you can see it has a adjustable eye guard, a very hot, uh, so you can adjust that eye guard in or out, which is really nice if you're wearing glasses or you want some eye relief there. This is an awesome eyepiece. I can't recommend these Astrotechs enough uh, for the slower scopes. Uh, I'm not too familiar with faster scope eyepieces. I can only recommend to you uh, what I've used with my previous Mac and with uh, this Edge here. Uh, the next part is the Celestron Nex YZ phone holder. I talked about this in a previous video. If you didn't see that, go and check that out now. Um, this is what I use to hold my phone for all my imaging. This has been an awesome phone holder. Three axis, three way adjustable, really awesome. Now the phone I have in here right now is not the actual phone I am using because I am actually taking video with my S10 Plus now, but this is another Galaxy. This is an A21 series, and I've got it lined up with the eyepiece. Kind of hard to see in there, but uh, there's three-way adjustable, very simple to align. Um, I love this phone holder. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, pick one of those up. Now, and something else I didn't talk about, uh, what I also have is... I've got this Celestron uh, 0.7 times reducer. Now I add this right in here and then I put the visual back on. Now what this reducer does, this is awesome. This reducer uh, knocks my telescope, my OTA from F10 down to F7. And that means a faster scope, which means more data in the 30 seconds of all my images, I get more data, and that's going to help tremendously. Um, you know, one thing about these SCTs is the long focal point. You can really pick up the small galaxies. But if you're imaging uh, bigger galaxies like Andromeda or Bodes, you can add in this reducer, and you can widen your field of view and you can get that data you can get a lot more data in your 30 seconds because that's all that i'm getting is 30 second exposure um so this reducer has really helped a lot i've been using this a lot uh, it's a little tricky uh figuring out <clears throat> excuse me with the back uh the back spacing of your imaging train it's a little tricky but once you get it figured out um this thing works awesome and also I do use uh, Saboni. This is a 32 millimeter Plosol. And I use this one a lot before I started using these Astrotex. This is just a cheap uh, eyepiece. And I've gotten a lot of great views with it, but I'm realizing that I want to step up my game and start using better eyepieces um, because those are gonna give you the crisper, better views. Um, I'm looking at Explore Scientific eyepieces, and we'll see what happens with those. Um, hopefully, that's going to be something uh, new that I can get into and start using. Um, next part is the mount. This is an Orion Skyview Pro. Now, a lot of these Skyview Pros don't come with the go-to upgrade. This one has the go-to upgrade, of course, because if it didn't, I wouldn't be able to track all the galaxies and DSOs that I image. Um, you have a motor down here and you have a motor up top. Now you can buy this go-to upgrade uh, separately from the mount or you can actually buy it together. Um, but this mount is rated at about 20 pounds and realistically with all this gear that I've got on top here, I am pushing the limit of this mount. Um, it, I mean, I'm probably right over the limit. So what I have to do is I've got to get an extra counterweight to add in here, a seven and a half pound counterweight that I'm going to add on uh, to help balance out the telescope a lot more because my stars are starting to get a little bit oval and that's not good. You don't want that. That means you want those round stars. So 
that's what's coming next, an extra counterweight. So if you do have this mount and this OTA, make sure your counterweights are popular. Make sure you balance before your session. Um, but otherwise, this mount has been great. It's an entry-level mount. Um, I don't think it comes with a polar scope. I'm not sure, but this one I bought used and I got a polar scope with it. Um, this is important to have. Uh, even though you do have the star sense, it's important to have this polar scope here because when I set up, I always polar align my mount first just to make sure I'm accurately polar aligned and then I use the star sense for the, the further alignment and I've had great results with that, no issues. Um, so next part let's look at down here is with the star sense comes um, you get the Celestron control box which connects to your Orion control box and then from there you uh, you have a cord that goes up to your camera and then Celestron also gives you a hand controller so you get a hand controller to connect to all this to and this, this hand controller is just like any other hand controller it has 40,000 plus 50,000 plus uh, stored DSOs um, but I actually what I did was I added in an extension to mine because these extensions are just so short and I bought an extension to add in and that's really helpful when you're walking around the telescope. Um, you don't want to be pulling on your telescope and creating more vibrations and it's just so much easier to use that way. Um, this mount is really good. I recommend it if you don't have a whole lot of money. Very simple. Um, another thing that I did down here was I added in these uh, Celestron shock mounts. These are for the feet of the telescope, as you can see. Um, I got one under each foot. And I do a lot of my imaging on concrete. So uh, you'd be surprised how much vibration comes through the concrete. Uh, a car drives by, um, if you're just walking, or, um, I mean, the wind blows, anything that makes your mount vibrate is going to show up into your OTA and when you're imaging you don't want your OTA vibrating at all so if you're imaging on anything hard a wooden deck concrete I highly recommend these these have helped me out a lot uh, especially if the wind blows it helps dampen that vibration anything in my mount um, so I don't know how much these are you can get these used for pretty cheap and 50 60 bucks but hey i think that they're worth every penny um so that is my setup we just went over every little piece this is exactly what i'm using um if you have any questions about anything that i've talked about here today uh you know write it in the comments and i'll be more than glad to help you um most of this stuff i've bought and used None of this stuff is brand new. I think the star sense I bought brand new, um, but everything is used. Everything on here I bought and used. So uh, there's a lot of great websites out there. You can pick stuff up. Um, if you have any questions or comments, if you like this video, that would be great. It really helps me out a lot. And let me know. I'll be more than glad to help you answer any questions. Uh, so this was part one of the three-part series that I talked about. And we're going to get into part two next, hopefully soon. And at the end of this video, I'm going to show you some of the images that I've gotten in the past month or two. I think the, this past month I've gotten a lot of great images and I've actually gotten my best image to date. It's M101. I hope you like that. I'm going to put some of those in the end of this video. So thanks for watching, guys. Until part two, we'll see you again. Take care.